Good morning. Welcome to the FTS bet slip on Wednesday, the 26th of May. Um, right, I'm, I'm really busy. I've got to catch up. I've fortunately been away for a couple of days. The boys, as I said on Monday, took me away golfing. Sugsy, chief organiser, book somewhere where the internet service is tin cans. Um, it's the first question, isn't it? First question you ask when you book anywhere, have you got decent internet? It was a nice resort, middle of nowhere, two decent golf courses, pissed with rain, gave them a pace in both days. But the first question is, have you got internet? Um, absolutely dreadful, so I couldn't really keep up with stuff away. I, was, I, I did the best I could. Um, but obviously now having come back and having been away last week, um, I'm um, just catching up. So do bear with me those waiting emails and things. I'm going to literally... Um, sit and work through the days today and tomorrow and hopefully have it all up square um fdd um master data um i'm sure a lot of you are aware the mets marseille game i wasn't trading the game or in the game but i saw tweets about it uh the mets marseille game um apparently i think the it was one nil to mets final whistle went and they'd scored in about the 96th minute i think Final whistle went, uh, and then I think VAR awarded a penalty after the final whistle to Marseille, and they scored it and made the game 1-1, and I think the official timing was something like 90 plus 14 um, on Football 24. Um, the FDD data hasn't picked that up, and, and the guy I need to speak to is away. Um, so I'm going to get hold of him tomorrow, hopefully get all that corrected. And then we'll publish the historic um, end of season data with all the correct um, results in. So you, anybody who's copied and pasted that, you'll be able to paste over the top uh, if you've just used the day result sheet. But I will I will get it sorted over the next 24, 48 hours um, once I can get hold of them. Um, and um, ultimate, I'll upload all the end of season databases tomorrow right through. And then the end of the month, I'll upload all the sheets to FTS, the 1x2 percentages. we got goal averages. And then over the foot, sort of course of the week, then coming weeks, I'll, I'll talk you through some of that um, as we look towards next season. Um, what else did I have? I was going to do a bit of Mindset Monday in a minute. I'm going to talk a bit more about the summer school, actually. I'm not going to do a massive Mindset Monday, but I'm going to talk a little bit about um some of the aims of what i want to do in the summer with with people um oh, i was going to hypnotize everybody wasn't i, I can hypnotize everybody i've done over the last we had to cut devon short the weather was absolutely horrific down there i love it because whenever we're going somewhere sam talks about moving um and we were going sort of west country bound to see her family and doing a loop round and um on the way there, she sort of, you know, the kids have moved out. Now, oh, I've got a story there. That's what I was going to tell you about. Oh, I've got a break in one. I'll do that in a minute. This is uh, this is unbelievable, genuinely. I'm not making this. What well, I'm going to tell you in a minute about my daughter, I'm not making up. Absolute madness. I'll, but let's do this bit first. The, hypno, the hypnosis. Let's solve one of the UK's problems. So, and then going up to Essex yesterday, I've done in the last seven days about 1,200 miles. I don't do a lot of driving. We used to, don't anymore don't really go anywhere and since, since the pandemic that was the first time I'd stayed away from my house um, you know probably like a lot of people in in whatever it is 14 15 months um, I don't mind driving I quite enjoy it um, but I do have and Britain has a particular issue with and you're all gonna you're all gonna say he's right I've got this people who drive in the middle lane and there's going to be people listening to this who do it. I don't know what it is they think that they're going to get themselves in the middle lane and there's some sort of protective force field barrier around them that nobody can touch them. But they get in the middle lane on motorways and they sit there 60 mile an hour, completely fucking oblivious to the rest of the world. And it drives me bananas. And I've witnessed it time and time, all the way down there, round all the way back up to Essex yesterday, going up the... M25, etc. Uh, just absolutely horrific. So we need something to snap them out of it. So if you are a middle lane driver, I'm going to hypnotise you now. I'm going to hypnotise you. You're going to go into a deep trance and every time you pull into the middle lane for no fucking reason whatsoever and drive along, 
you are going to say to yourself, I am a fuckpot middle lane driving mong, move over. There, so that's what you're going to do. I am a fuckpot middle lane driving mong, move over. I am a fuckpot middle lane driving mong, move over. Those words now are going to come into your ears as you get yourself into that middle lane to cruise around at 60. I am a fuckpot middle lane driving mong, move over. If you do that, see, now, whenever you pull in the middle lane, that's going to happen. If you then go to your dinner parties and your things and tell your mates exactly the same, they'll do it. Within a year's time, this will be viral. Nobody will be driving in the middle lane when they shouldn't be. I am a fuckpot middle lane driving mong, move over. Um, fucking horrific. There, do it, honestly. It'll come into you. Somebody, somebody in the next week is going to listen to this podcast and find themselves sitting, crawling along in the middle lane. Those words are going to come into them. Tell your mates, we'll solve it. We'll cure it all. The police are meant, I, th- I thought the police were meant to do something about it, but nothing ever happens. It's, a, it's an absolute plague. It's horrific. Um, I don't. I do not get it. Just this. What is it? What do they think is going to happen there? Big force field. Nothing can touch me if I sit here. Um, oh, my daughter. We got back. <laughs> I got back last night. When we went the first day, we went last week, and we cut it short. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Driving down. Driving down. Sam was talking about moving down. Uh, moving. Kids have gone. Um, let's move. I'm, I'm all over the place here, and I let's move. Uh, why don't we look at moving again? And she's done it before. We've, I think, I've said we went up to Southport years back. Nice, I like Southport, lovely, lovely place to visit. Oh, this is nice, we could live up here, um, wherever we seem to go. So we're heading west, and she went, um, and obviously, she's from Exeter. I could, uh, we could move back down here, couldn't we? Got nothing tying us, blah blah blah. You can work anywhere, yep, 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 yep. Um, and I just sort of go along with it, yeah, okay, okay, whatever. Um, the weather was absolutely horrific. We cut the trip short. It was just horrendous. I took the dog down um, beach, could hardly open the car door on the first day. I could barely get out of the car. It was the wind. I've never, I mean, I lived down there for a bit. I've never seen wind like it. Um, so we cut that short, come home. I said, still want to move down there on the way back? Nah, see? See, it's these places and it's like the holiday thing. You go and it's nice. That's it. Um, I like the West Country. I like it to visit. It's too far from everything for me. Um, but, um, yeah, it is a nice place to visit. So so that was that. But the first day we got to um, where we were staying on, on the first night, um, Sam got a text on our phone, her phone, from Jody. Um and for those of you new to this podcast, I know there's not many of you left, but Jodie's our daughter, lives out in Malta. I've told stories of Jodie before. She's now 32 years of age, and the last 16 years have been an absolute mission. I can't remember the ones I've told. I'm definitely certain I've told the one about the car, um, when the boyfriend turned up at my front door with a car. I don't know whether I've told the cruise ship one. Um, I know I went out for a few drinks with Shazwad and, and sat on border with all these over a a, a while, a few years back, um, uh, we've had an abortion. She's now had a baby. Um, her and the bloke were trying to live together, but it wasn't really working. So eventually, got the guy, uh, got Jody her own place in Malta sorted out. Obviously, Sam's waiting to go out there. So I got a text last week. Uh, Sam did <laughs> need to talk to you. Oh, she always does it when we're going away. You know, whenever the, the, the baby business and the abortion business was on our first day of our holiday to years, a couple of years ago, we were in Los Angeles and um, got the text first day. I thought, it's almost like she does it on purpose. So Sam instantly now, like the radar's on. Um, well, let's have a call now. No, no, I can wait till you're back. So we got back and... Uh, this is unbelievable, genuinely, this is genuinely true, lives in Malta, Malta just off Italy, high mafia presence, um, obviously the father of the baby is there, he's still involved in, in the baby's life, it's not just a cut off, you know, they just don't get on, so he is on the run, and, and this is a developing story, I'm like BBC News, this is a developing story because I don't know much about it, but currently it involves, he is on the run in Tanzania, and I had to I knew Tanzania was somewhere Africa, but I didn't know its exact location. My African geography has never needed to be up, so I had to look that up. He's on the run in Tanzania with a hundred thousand pound um, 
ransom or bounty that he's got to pay for something that we know nothing about, don't know. Um, and basically, if he doesn't pay it, his family's going to get done in. Um, and that's as pretty much as well. I know a little bit more, but I won't go into full details here, um, just in case you're one of them. Um, and I tell you, in life, people look and go, you're lucky in life, and this, that, and the other. I've worked really hard, got decent amount of money. There's times in life you'd give it all up just to have some sort of normality. No matter what people think, oh, he's lucky in this, that, and the other. She's given me some horror shows. This is yet another one now. Um, as I say, it's breaking news. It's early days. I will keep you informed. Um, not much you can do. I'm, you know, she's 32. I'm over here. We are going to get Sam out there, but I'm worried now about Sam going out there because uh, I don't really know what this is all about. Um, and you just, you do, you know, wh whatever, whatever when you look at people's lives and think they're lucky or this is great or that, you know, you, you know, no one knows what other people go through. I was talking to the lads about it when I was away. You just, it's just unbelievable. It is unbelievable. And, and love her to bits, but she's just an absolute car crash. The, whether it's people she meets, you know, a lot of it she'll say, oh, it's not her fault, but I just don't get it. But there we go. So that's where we're at. So I will keep you posted. Um, yeah, marvellous. Um, unbelievable, Jeff. Right, where are we at? Can't. Um, right, yeah, Mindset Monday, Wednesday. Right, a lot of people getting lots of queries about what happens now. Season's over. Yesterday was the first Tuesday in in. I don't know, eight, nine months. I didn't have to do an ultimate process. I didn't know what to do with myself. Got up in that hotel. Uh, Gary Smith holding his head. Oh, I've got headache. I've got hangover. I've got headache. Um, forgive me, Stewie. Played very well, Gary, at the golf. It was nice and lovely of the lads to take me away after. So it was absolutely fantastic. I really enjoyed it. Um, bar the no internet. Really appreciate the, the effort they put in to do that. Uh, but Gary was lying in bed. Oh, I've got headache. I'm not very good the next day. Um, but he did play well, the boy. Um, but yeah, yes, there was a first I didn't do. Right, so the bottom line now is to move things forward through the summer, and I really have one goal. I think everybody's been through different experiences um, over the last 12, 15 months, and I'm talking betting-wise. I know we've all got our own personal issues, but betting-wise, um, some have been tested to the hilt, some have ridden that roller coaster right to the end which i got nothing but massive respect for others have given up others have done quite well others had set themselves up slightly differently at the start of the season because they were cautious of what was going to happen um, and obviously now we've got that season complete we've got the data and we need to look forward to how do we move forward into next season and particularly for those people who've had um, a bad time um, and as I've said last couple of these, that you've got to make that decision whether this is for you or not um, and what it isn't. And you'll hear me quite often say things like, I'm a machine and this, that and the other. And I say it tongue in cheek, but you've got to understand how you work and what makes you tick and what keeps you going. I've been listening to a book recently um, on Audible, Walking the Dog. And the guy I've been listening to, really interesting, uh, really interesting life. Uh, made a ton of money, lost it all, um, built himself back up again, absolute multi now, um, really interesting guy though, the stuff he's been involved with, the projects he's been involved in, he started out in, in stocks and shares, commodities, stuff like that, um, and he was sort of set on being right rather than what worked all the time, so when he was right he made a ton of money, but he was so stubborn to it that he then lost it all. Um, but he, he sort of used a great analogy. And, and I actually was thinking about it when I was driving the car. I drive a car. I am, I am one of those people, if something needs doing, I get somebody in. I know nothing about it. I detest doing manual jobs because I know nothing about them. I've no desire to learn how to do them. You know, I know there's people who love doing their own stuff. I'd get nothing out of it whatsoever. If something needs doing, phone a bloke up who knows what he's doing, get him in to do it rather than try and fuck about myself. And I was driving my car last week. And I thought, I've absolutely no idea how a car works. And I was going down the 303, or coming back on the 303, and a couple of times I wanted to overtake something, put the boot down, and I've got a, I've got a Merc, it's fairly powerful. 
and flipping i just love you know when you do need to get past something just put your boot down and it takes off gets past get back in and um i have no idea how that works i actually have no idea when i put my boot down what actually happens i'm assuming it pumps fuel into the engine but i don't really i just have no idea concept of what actually is going on at all other than i'm sitting there pressing pedals and the thing does what i want it to do and it and it got me that thought process was a result of this guy who basically treats everything like a machine and he said basically what you got to try and do is understand the workings of that machine once you understand the workings of that machine you can fix it or you can know how to operate it um and he he took scenarios in in he's taken scenarios in in commodities and things where he broke them down and I've been thinking about it a lot. I thought that's it. that is basically exactly it. If you forget yourself as as a human being and look at yourself as a machine, and a lot of this stuff I've been doing with values, what is it that makes you work? For us to be at our best, we've got to be a little bit selfish and we've got to find what makes us function at our best. And when you're applying that to something like betting, you do have to understand you're going to have dreadful periods very likely at some stage you'll go bust you know a lot of the most successful people in the world have gone bust trying and it's that resilience to keep going um and and if you look at yourself and say i'm this type of machine what actually makes you tick what makes you work at your best what is it and then look at if it starts to go wrong how you fix it because you understand it a lot better then you're able to do it I've made massive changes in me because this, I mean, this thing with Jody would be an example. I'd have just been flying off the handle, but I'm actually taking a lot more relaxed, sit back approach to, I need to actually find out what's going on. I need to find out what the risk is to everybody and take it from there. Um, whereas before I'd have just been for fuck's sake, what's going on? A fucking joke. It actually doesn't achieve anything other than me ranting off, which, which might release some of my own stresses, but doesn't actually solve anything. Um, and, and I think exactly the same in betting. What is it that actually makes you work? You know, if you could sit and write your ideal situations down that you would perform at your best that wouldn't be stressed. And you can't just say winning all the time because that's not impossible. But things like risk reward. Do you like, do you like low risk with lower reward? Do you like higher risk with higher reward? So obviously, let's say you were, you were, if you're waiting on late goals, you know, and you're laying at 1.2, 1.3, that's high reward, uh, low risk, but it comes with the fact that you might have long losing runs. You might sit there, you know, and, and have 15, 20 games. And, and a lot of these people sort of tell you, oh, you're the longest losing run at even money you can expect is eight or whatever. That's not the reality of life. You know, you go into a roulette wheel, pretty much even money if you're pretty particularly if you're playing a single zero wheel, pretty much even money, red or black. Um, but you can walk in and see 15 blacks on the trot quite easily. We don't know what's going to happen. We never, as much preparation as we like to think we can do, we never know what's going to happen. But finding out how you work, you know, what type of machine are you, and then you know what, you know, the two elements to it, what makes you work at your best, and if things go to go wrong, what parts do you need to fix? And you get that balance, and I think you'll find that life in general, just not just betting, but life in general, will actually tick along a lot better or a lot more harmonious. You can't control things, that things are going to go wrong in everybody's life. You can't stop that happening. You can try and mitigate against it, but you can't stop it from happening full stop. There's things out of your control. This situation at the minute is completely out of my control. Didn't know anything about it. Couldn't have done anything about it. Um, other than going back to when Jody was fifteen and locking her up for good, um, which obviously isn't a, isn't a solution, um, but that's really what I want to get to in the summer school is is this period now. Yes, we can have facts and data and this, that, and the other, but I'll, I'll always maintain it doesn't matter if the person's wrong. We we need to get each of you looking at the processes. What type of person are you? What type of machine are you? And put in there. Once we know that, we can already set things that if that starts to go wrong, this is what we're going to do so we can start to fix it. I think it's a really good analogy, personally. I, I, it's one I've really bought into. Um, 
kind of taking the personal blaming anything else emotion just look at what makes you work best um, and I'm really starting to identify it in myself what sort of betting what things make me work best and I think that we'll um, yeah we'll achieve good stuff with it so that's really the sort of going to be as well as processes and we're going to do 100 day challenges and things and we're going to set all this up through the next couple of weeks um, that's the sort of thought process that I want particularly the guys who are going to be involved in that to start looking at you know what type of machine are you when are you at your happiest when are you at your best what makes you what makes you perform well you know if if four hours sleep five hours sleep doesn't function make you function well we need to get to eight hours sleep it's no use just saying well i can't do it of course you can we find a way to do it you know and, and there's there's techniques and methods that that can work if flying off the handle at, you know a missed penalty is something that that you do we need to find a way to deal with that because it's going to happen and happen again and if it un if it unravels you then we can fix it so that's the sort of areas that I'm talking about and we'll um, go through them as I say this week I'm literally just catching up I've just got I've got a load of stuff to do I want to get these end of season files all done and, and get the stuff published that needs to be published check all that data um, but next week obviously we're into the first of June we'll um, push on I will still publish any half time CSLAs that qualify trading group you'll still get any two aheads that qualify there's nothing today only some Japanese football we have got Norway MLS um, you know things will quiet and write down but I'll still publish anything that qualifies beginner games through and, and do the usual updates um, but then my attention will turn to sort of the setup for next season and guiding these people through um, summer school a few things I've got to sort out and I'm out a little bit next week and obviously I've got to sort out Sam going to um, she's had her second vaccine now we've got to sort her getting out to Malta if she's going um, but yeah that's where it'll be so podcast will continue we will be doing four a week I will get them on some sort of schedule I know it's been a little bit up in the air recently um, but I will get them on some sort of schedule um, and we've got a nice two or three months to get everything sorted out um, as always thank you for listening have a lovely Wednesday and I will be back with you all on uh, I'll do one tomorrow um, but do just have a think what type of machine are you what is it that actually makes you tick forget any betting anything just in life when are you at your best what makes you function uh, fully operational at your best what elements in your life you know what do you need you know I know the things I need like I said I need fun in my life I need a bit of excitement in life I don't like boring people um, things like that what actually makes you function I like to read um, you know TV doesn't make me function very well all those sort of things just you know inane bollocks doesn't make me function very well um, so have a look at it and then you can look at how can we get you to that optimum what can we remove but most importantly if things start to go wrong what do we need to do to fix it we can build things in place and I'll, I'll walk you know as I say the summer school I'll, yeah, there will be stuff on the podcast but it will be a lot more detailed I'll be able to walk people through that okay have a lovely Wednesday and I'll be back with you tomorrow morning <laughs>